friends. Welcome to Sky House Herbs podcast. I'm Ashley Ellen Voss, a clinical herbalist. And in this space, I share my knowledge and experience with plant medicine to help you on your own journey of healing and transformation. Join me in exploring the ancient wisdom of plant spirit medicine and how it can be used to heal the body, mind, and spirit. We'll talk to experts in the field and share stories from people who've been transformed by powerful plant allies. New episodes are released each Monday, so please subscribe. And now let's explore this mystical world of plant medicine together. Hey everyone, welcome in. Today we'll be looking at the herb of the month, which is rose. Um, this herb I chose for specific reasons for my heart today. Um, and I also think it's just a wonderful remedy that everyone has access to that they can use in a lot of different ways for different things. So I hope you enjoy today's video. Before I dive into our content, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, that would be wonderful. It helps other people to find me. It helps me know that you guys are out there watching. And um, I always love your comments too. So please feel free to leave your ideas and comments at the end. So um, today Rose came to me, it actually came to me last night when I was falling asleep and I was thinking about my video for this week. And um, it comes from a place of, um, it came, it came up because I'm grieving right now. Um, we found out that our dog, my favorite beloved dog, Rhea, who I've had for almost 11 years now, um, has terminal cancer and she is not going to make it. There's, um, it's pretty late stages. She's so healthy. You know, it, it went unnoticed, um, cause she's just a cheerful, like most dogs, like just tolerant and easy um, and didn't make much of a fuss. And a few weeks ago, she started throwing up and we took her in and um, the test just came back yesterday that um, she has two masses and we will be helping her to the other side this week. So I come to today's video with a bit of a heavy heart, um, a lot of gratitude and joy, um, and also just sadness because our animal friends are just indescribable companions in this path of life. And they teach us so much about unconditional love and forgiveness and enjoyment and pleasure. Um, so uh, I, rose is an herb that I'm going to, I'm making, going to make myself um, a tea that has been helpful for me in the past with rose. Um, and so I thought, what better time to share this with you? I also wanted to shout out that I'm wearing a hat made by my friend Toad, who's an incredible artist um, and a tarot reader. I have her artwork right there, the two of her pieces. And I'll include a link where you can buy this cool hat and uh, her artwork that's for sale. And part of the reason I'm wearing this is because my eyes, I've been just crying nonstop <laughs> for two days as we waited for the test results. And, um, so I am, I am a little bit of a mess today. Um, and I accept that I am cool with being a mess because as one of my great teachers, Rukmini, um, said in a podcast episode we did together is that grief is the price we pay for love. And the greater the grief, I think the greater the love. So I know, you know, it's part of the process of how much I love Rhea that I'm going to feel equal amounts of grief. So let's talk about the rose and um, its medicinal powers. It's it's probably a plant that you know, <laughs> um, you've grown, smelled, maybe you've received as a gift. I wanted to just share um, a picture, a botanical picture. Um, so this is an image of the rose drawn and here are the rose hips right here. This is the wild rose. But really, um, cultivated or wild roses can be used medicinally in this case. So we call it, you know, the, the Latin name is Rosa SPP, which just means a variety of species. There's Rose Damascus, which is often used for its essential oils. Um, there's Rosa Virginiana and just tons of, of roses that really all, none of them are, there's no poison rose if you botanically ID it out, um, all, you know, basically all of your five petal roses in the Rosaceae family um, have similar energetics and uses, uses. There's a few subtle differences I'll talk about, but um, you know, in terms of, of medicinal use, we can just say yes to all roses. 
Um, we do want to, I do want to say that it is important that you source your roses organically because in the florist world, they treat a lot of roses with pesticides and preservatives. And so if you're going to be using roses as a medicine, please, please try to find an organic version or grow it yourself and don't spray them. And that way you can ensure you're not getting any harmful chemicals uh, in with your medicine. I wanted to read to you the history of where the rose came from, according to Greek myth. I thought this was a really beautiful story. This is from one of my favorite herb books called Flower Power by Anne McIntyre, Flower Remedies for Healing Body and Soul Through Herbalism, Homeopathy, Aromatherapy, and Flower Essences. So this book, you know, it has a few pages on a dozen or probably more like 20, two dozen plants. And um, and I like that it, it shares the folklore. So here it is for rose. The rose of all flowers is probably the one most steeped in legend and symbolism. According to Greek myth, the goddess of flowers, Chloris, one day found the body of a beautiful nymph and asked the help of the three graces to create a very special flower out of the lifeless body of the nymph. The graces gave the flower joy, brightness, and charm. Then she asked Aphrodite, the goddess of love, to give the flower beauty. Dionysus, the god of wine, to add a special nectar to create a beautiful perfume, and Zephyr, the wind god, to blow away the clouds so that the precious flower could open her petals to the sun. Thus the rose was born and was crowned the queen of flowers, the emblem of Venus, and the symbol of love. And I think the connection, again, between love and grief is so powerful. Um, you know, none of us are a stranger to grief, maybe in various degrees, but they're so intertwined. And so I think the fact that we can use this flower of love for grief um, should be underscored. I, I think it's an important connection um, because when we open our heart more to the beauty of the things that we love and we really let ourselves embody the pain of grief, um, our capacity to love grows. I don't know if you've ever felt that before, but I, I feel I felt that with every grief in my life that through the process of grieving, my heart opens even more. And I think rose is a medicine that can do that. It can do that quite beautifully. Rose in its energetics is cooling, astringent, and sour. Those are the three major tastes and qualities of rose. Now in Chinese medicine, we would add in that the rose hip is considered to be also um, sweet because of the sugars in it. But the but the petals, um, like the, the actual flower as a medicine is really considered to be more on um, more sour and, and less sweet. Although it does have some beautiful aromatics in it that we can capture in a tea um, and in a jelly and in a salve. But really um, the, the, the most traditional use of rose was for fevers and for irritations and inflammations where there was a leaking quality. And, you know, when there is, um, you know, fever with, with a lot of, uh, you know, when the, basically when the body gets inflamed, the cell membranes start to become more porous. And so fluids can flow both in and out. And, um, I'm just noticing even with my eyes, you know, like I've had tears, fluids flowing out of my eyes. And so, and now all those membranes are filled with, you know, they're permeate, permeated with, <laughs> with water, with fluids. Um, and, um, you know, part of the medicine that we can give ourselves is something to help move those fluids through and then seal up the tissues, you know, not to close them down. I, you know, I, we never want to close anything down, but just to give a gentle nudge to what is going to bring the body back into balance. And so Rose does this. It will just help say, you know what, tissues? Let go of that extra fluid. Let go of the extra heat. Let go of the extra pain, right? Um, and so that you can come into a more cool, calm, and collected space. I wanted to read to you also from Matthew Wood's book um, on herbs. This is from his Earthwise Herbal, and this is his old old world book. And I'll include a link to all of these texts if you are interested in learning more about them. And the texts, if you're listening to this on, on iTunes or Spotify, just go to my YouTube channel and um, under the description, um, there'll be links there if they're not in the descriptions uh, where you are. So let's, let me tell you a little bit about um, Rose from Matthew Wood's perspective. <clears throat> um, 
So he says, in traditional medicine, the petals, leaves, stalks, roots, and root bark and thorns of both the wild and domesticated species have been used. One doctor from the 1700s has 50 different preparations. And then he says, um, although the Western tradition is universal in crediting rose hips with a cooling drying effect, Chinese herbalism does not agree. The hips of, rose, of Rosa levigata or the Cherokee rose are classified as sweet, sour, neutral, constricting, whereas the petals are sweet, bitter, and warming. And that's interesting. I've never felt rose to be particularly warming. It's always felt cooling, and maybe that's a little bit of the astringency. Um, he, Matthew Wood talks about using it specifically for chronic inflammation. That's one of his favorite uses. And as an astringent, when there is a, when there is inflammation and fluid in the lung, so he uses it as a lung remedy, um, lymphatic remedy. And in Chinese medicine, rose hips are traditionally used to control the release of semen to strengthen the kidneys. And I think this is a very venous thing, isn't it? Like the reproductive organs. Um, it and also in uh, Western herbalism, it's been used as a uterine tonic. So if we think about the venous ruled organs of the body, um, the skin, um, the fluids and the reproductive organs, we can think about rose as being very nourishing and balancing. So if we have uterine inflammation, if we have a uh, leaking of semen, then what rose is going to do is it's gonna just help tonify and clarify those organs so that we can hold the vital chi, we can hold the vital force. And we all know that trauma, grief, and loss, whether it be from um, miscarriage in the case of maybe uterine inflammation or uterine um, a, a loss, a, a loss of, of, of tone. Also post-childbirth, um, we can have a lot of swelling in the abdomen and rose is a wonderful remedy, uh, especially rose hips after childbirth to be drank in a tea to restore vital vitamin C content and also just to help gently move excess fluids out of the abdomen and from the uterus. This was interesting. Matthew Wood talks about specific indications for children, for delicate and sensitive children. This is from Australian herbalist Dorothy Hall. Children who wet the bed um, and then children born by C-section who don't have to fight their way out and they tend towards apathy. You can use the flower essence for these types of children. Um, you know, I studied with Margie Flint, a wonderful herbalist based out of Marblehead, Massachusetts. And she talked about using the, the petals in baths for, for children who've had trauma. And she said, specifically white roses or the very light, delicate pink roses in a bath for children who've experienced sexual trauma or where their innocence has been taken away too young. Um, and so this is a really nice remedy um, for children. And I've done roses in the bath with my girls just because life is, you know, we've, we've moved, we've had some traumas in our family. Um, so, you know, at different points I've done white or light pink roses in their bath. Um, it's also just, there's something beautiful about it that I think calms the, the child's spirit. Um, and then red roses can be really good um, for trauma in adult years where there's been maybe sexual assault um, or grief or loss, uh, you know, blood loss, things like that. Um, taking a bath with, uh, and even just breakups or divorces, taking a bath with red rose petals can be very, very healing. And, you know, we often think about roses as like, oh, romance and, you know, you know, anniversaries. And yes, that's true. And it can also be very healing for the loss of those things, the loss of love. Um, and so don't underestimate its use to help us kind of um, find fortitude again in our hearts and in our bodies. I also wanted to talk about rose um, water as a medicine. I use this a lot. I'm going to use it now. I keep it on my desk. <laughs> I've mentioned this in so many videos. If you've watched a lot of my videos, you'll see me spray this on my face. Um, rose is also rose water or hydrosol is very good for the skin. It's toning. It's astringent. Um, aromatherapy wise, it's really, really healing. Um, let me just grab from again, flower power and McIntyre. She talks about um, 
Rose water has been used to cleanse and tone the skin, prevent and smooth out wrinkles, to clear skin blemishes and inflammation such as acne, spots, boils, and abscesses. It can be used to bathe sore, tired, or inflamed eyes and to promote tissue repair. It helps prevent the infection of minor cuts and wounds and to reduce swelling of bruises and sprains. An infusion of rose petals can also be used as a mouthwash for mouth, mouth ulcers or inflamed bleeding gums, as a gargle for sore, sore throats, and a douche for vaginal discharge. So that's really interesting. You know, then that makes me think of using rose water like in a first aid kit. Um, I also have used it for sunburn before, you know, not... Um, not any like open burns, but um, just to cool the skin and then applying a little bit of aloe afterwards. But there's a lot of like, you know, yeah, it's just a really good skin remedy to have uh, to have around. Um, now I wanted to show you kind of what I'm going to be making for myself over the next few days, weeks, months, which is a cold infusion using rose petals. So um, I just have a glass mason jar, nothing fancy. These are my rose buds, and I got these from Mountain Rose Organic. I don't have any um, affiliation with them, but they have high quality organic herbs in bulk. So this is Rosa Damascana or Damascus. And so I'm just going to pour in about maybe like half a cup of dried roses in here. So about that. I'm I'm really more of like the folk method of measuring when I do it for myself. I just kind of eyeball it. And I usually can have a pretty good, I've been doing this long enough to where I'm like, I know the proportions that actually taste good. So I have about, you know, yeah, about maybe half a cup of dried rose petals. This is marshmallow root, which is for me, it's so moistening. It's soothing. It coats the mucous membranes. It's um it coats the when it when it coats the mucous membranes of the lungs and of the digestive system, it sends a reflex through the vagus nerve to the brain to stimulate parasympathetic activity, which is that rest, digest, and recover response. Um, so th I I think you know when you're in grief, that's really important is to give your nervous system a chance to rest and to replenish. Um, also, you know, I know for me, I'm really dehydrated from crying and just not forgetting that I need to drink water. <laughs> um, so this will also help me hold more water in my tissues. It's not like going to plump me up or anything, but it's just going to, um, it's going to coat the mucous membrane so that water, it has a, an affinity to water. So it'll hold water molecules along all the mucous membranes of my body. And I, I want that right now. So I'm just going to pour in about equal amount, about half a cup of dried marshmallow root. There we go. And then lastly, I'm going to add some cinnamon bark. I really like cinnamon bark chips, but if you're in a pinch, you can use the powder. You can use um, cinnamon sticks and just crush them up a little bit. And cinnamon is also... Um, well, actually, let me say this about marshmallow first, is that marshmallow is um, very moistening and cooling, and rose is a little bit drying and cooling. And so what I like about these two together is that the marshmallow takes some of the astringency out because I do want to reduce inflammation in my tissues, but I don't necessarily want to dry out too much. So you can think about the mucilage in the marshmallow is sort of balancing out that effect, but not stopping it from happening. And then the cool thing about cinnamon is that it is both drying and moistening because it has tannins and polysaccharides or mucilage. It does, it has both. So this is like, this is probably my favorite combination, these three together. Um, and so I'm going to just do maybe about a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half of cinnamon and then I just take some cold water and this is filtered. I think having clean filtered water is important. Spring water, if you live near a wild spring. And I'm just filling it up to the top. I'm gonna put my lid on. I'm gonna give it a good shake. And so uh, you can, it's in it pretty. So you can see the, you can see everything floating around. You can start to see a little bit of the viscosity starting to come out from both the mucilage in the 
cinnamon and in the um, from the marshmallow. So it's going to be this is going to be kind of a thick tea, like a I don't want to call it a porridge because it's not like spoonable, but it's going to be like a very a pretty viscous type of tea. Um, so uh, yeah, and that'll be really soothing. It's going to cool coat and then the heart medicine, you know, rose is really a medicine of the heart. So it's going to soothe the heart. Um, I also wanted to say that um, rose is really good for, um, oh, what was I going to say? Oh yeah. For um, anxiety um, and worry and overwhelm. So if you tend to be, you know, like, and I think with grief, like there can be that kind of hyper vigilance or that part of our mind that says, what could I have done differently? Is this my fault? You know, like the monkey brain of, um, of shoulda, woulda, couldas, as my grandmother would say, um, which really aren't helpful. You know, it is what it is. And so, um, letting, giving your nervous system a little bit of like a, you know, a little bit of a pat on the back, like you did your best. It's okay. Um, is part of the medicine of Rose too, which just is like, you know what, girl, give yourself a hug, you know, it's, you're, you're okay. It's going to be okay. And I need to hear that right now. So I'm going to give myself that medicine too. Um, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to let it steep for probably about six hours, um, six to eight hours. You know, you could also make something like this overnight and let it sit on the counter and let it steep overnight and then strain it in the morning. The tea will last about a day unrefrigerated and about two to three days refrigerated. So you can make larger batches if you want or smaller batches if you want. And then um, I don't particularly need honey in it. To me, the cinnamon gives it a sweetness and so does the marshmallow. But if you really didn't like the taste, you could always add a little bit of honey, a little bit of licorice if you don't have high blood pressure and you're not pregnant. Um, but in terms of like safety and pregnancy and breastfeeding, these three herbs are safe and could be um, taken. So that's that's what I have. So I'm going to let this steep. And then this evening, um, since it's like late morning right now, I'm going to strain it out and I'm going to drink it. I'm going to make this for me and my girls and my husband because we're all in this um, together, you know, this process of celebrating the beautiful life of, of a beloved friend and, um, you know, mourning the loss of that presence in your life. So we're going to all take this in together. And um, yeah, I think that's all I have for today. Thank you all for watching. Please leave your comments. Let me know how you use Rose, um, how Rose has impacted your life. If you've had any experiences with loss and grief and the herbs maybe, or the things that you've found that have been very helpful for you. I know for our family tonight, we're going to have, um, we're going to have a, a farewell party for Rhea. We're going to celebrate her life with party hats and some music and candles and, um, just shower her with lots and lots of love, wishing her farewell on her next journey, wherever it is she's going. We're really excited for what's ahead for her. And then um, we'll have another party for her um, after she passes uh, in celebration of her life where we'll look through photos and just, yeah, kind of remember, remember what a, what a great ally and friend she was. So thank you all. Um, and yeah, I'll see you all next week.